This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. Yes, and uh, it's been a couple of weeks because life's been running around and kicking us in the balls, and the world fucking exploded. Holy it shit. Ever. Uh, and we're going to touch a little bit on, on Ferguson a bit this week. We're not going to do too much because there's still lots and lots more information and and things could very well change between the time this show goes up. Or hell, even the time we start recording this to the time it goes up to the time it actually goes live everywhere else. So Yeah, yeah everything so, is just so volatile in that area that it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen in the next few days, yeah. let alone next week. Well, or since so much hour. information is being suppressed, you know, we have absolutely no idea how much we don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, the most updates that I've been getting on on Ferguson have been people from Ferguson actually tweeting about it and throwing it up on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. So it's through social media I've been getting things and not through the news. So you get the social media news stories where, where you know, the cops are actually just – firing upon civilians with tear gas or what have you. And uh, civilians aren't doing anything other than standing around when the cops don't want them to. You know, you hear stories about vandalization, people breaking into businesses, and then you see pictures where, yeah, that is going on. People are getting into businesses, but it's to get things like milk or water to wash the tear gas out of people's eyes. Can I just say, while we're talking about the vandalism, Mm -hmm. I hope some of you saw this, but CNN had put up an image of a bunch of guys in um, fatigues pointing guns at a man with his arms up in the air. And on the side of a um, mailbox um, that was directly in front of the police, somebody had tagged it with, fuck the police. (laughs) That made CNN. And CNN aired this for a really long time. Yep. Well then. Oh, and everybody... So there's, a, you know, there's your one little bit of levity in this situation. Oh, yeah. And then it... aired the word fuck for like five minutes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because... But what we do know... What we do know is... Uh, it started after... Uh, you know, a white cop killed an unarmed black kid, uh, Michael Brown. Um, autopsy I've seen... I've seen going around said it was... That the kid was shot, what, uh, five or six times? I six think times. Was, yeah. yeah, six times or so, and at least twice in the head. Yep. And, right. And from what I've heard, and, and the accounts probably, well, they definitely differed between eyewitnesses and police, because the police have had to change their story about three fucking times, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. one thing if you have to alter your statements because new facts are available. But when you've got eyewitnesses that are saying, and there's even video evidence out there, I believe, that shows, hey, this is what happened, what went on, then, you know, it's it's kind of telling when you, you, as the officers, as the police department, are having to change your stories over and over again. When the evidence is right there in your face. So, so from what I've, what I've heard, uh, Michael Brown and his friend, you know, they were meeting up, they were walking down the road, like, middle of the road, okay, not very safe, and that's, that's fine. Officer walk, officer not walks by, but uh, drives by, and you know there was an exchange where his officers like, you know, get out of the fucking road or whatever, you know, just acting like a little bit of a prick. But the guys, you know, the guys, you know, bitch back at him, and they were they were complying, you know, to their credit, from what I understand, they were complying, they were getting out of the road or whatever. When they the cop obviously heard them, slammed on his brakes and just uh, reversed back and just. I think he's just like grabbed Brown and just started like harassing him and ended up shooting him. Um, you know, and even though Brown was at one point submitting and surrendering, he's like, hey, you know what? It, it, you know, I'm just don't shoot. I'm surrendering. But the cop shot anyway. And of course, people protesting that, especially from what I understand. I, and again, some of this may be true, may not be true. We'll find out as it all settles. But I've heard that they've left the body out there for four hours after he was shot, which... There's actually footage of, of that. Yeah, okay. 
So as yeah. far as I know, that is actually true. Yeah, which is not cool. And so far, the officer that has that was responsible, he's not really getting anything. You know, he's not really being punished in any way. Yeah, he's not been charged with anything. Um, yeah. well, now, the interesting thing about it is so surprising. Yeah. The interesting thing about it is people are all up in arms because eyewitnesses said that he was running away. Yeah. And the latest um, autopsy report um, states that he was actually shot in the front. Yeah. yeah. And people well, are and... like, oh, well, you know, does that mean all of these protesters are going to apologize and pay for the damages? Well, See, it... anybody who says bullshit like that, do you not understand that the fact that he was shot in the front is actually worse than if he was shot in the back? Yeah. Because like, it yeah, means and... he wasn't running away. Right. And, 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 and he and was the way... far enough away that he didn't get any powder burns on him. So to me... That says he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, so he was just and he, shot. And he was far enough away to not be a danger to the police officer at the moment. Yeah. It's, it's just, no, he's just cops, most likely, I say most likely, racist asshole who is currently getting away with murder. Which is why I and other a lot of other people are fucking pissed. Right, and see, here's here's something that I, the, the, the from the autopsy report, when you, when you look at it, Four of the other bullets that were, you know, shot were shot into his right arm. And you look at it, it's clear that they were covering his face probably when he was being shot. Because I don't know if you remember that line from Fargo when, you know, Frances McDormand is expecting the, the wreck after after everything. She says, well, it looks like there's a shot in the right hand and a shot in the face. Looks like that's a defensive wound. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I know I don't want to equate movie reality with real life, but yeah, but that's it, how. I... Yeah, if, yeah, if if a spade is a spade, you may as well call it a spade. You know, that's what I, I know. think. It, it just it doesn't it just doesn't make sense why he would be shot four times in the arm, and the and the the shots in his front seem flush with those of having somebody raised. Yeah, maybe they're raised. Yeah, against I mean, the face. I mean, like it just it 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 doesn't make sense. And regardless, I mean, it, it, ugh. <laughs> Again, yeah. there's just so much that isn't being told. There's so much that isn't being said, and there's so yeah. much conflicting information that's coming out. It's impossible to actually say what happened. But given the facts, like you said, a spade is a spade at this point. Yeah, yeah. and and it's gonna be hard. I mean, this the guy who did the latest autopsy um, was called in specially to do it. Um, and they're actually calling in somebody else to do another special autopsy. But the even the second guy has said, it's going to be really hard for us to figure out exactly what happened because in between the time they did the initial autopsy and then decided to revisit it, they had had him involved. Yeah. And cleaned him up. Oops. It's like, oh, God So damn it. When, when you're literally destroying evidence, it becomes a lot harder to figure out what the fuck happened. Exactly. Uh, now, there was one other thing that people have also said that, uh, that they were saying that the cops initially were saying that they had suspected him in a robbery or something over cigars or what have you. Yeah. And for one thing, the time of the robbery and the time Michael Brown was shot, I think it was like – Maybe I think it was less than ten minutes. I think I want to say about five or six minutes apart. The the spot where he was shot and the actual store they're about three quarters of a mile apart. Now tell me, do we know anybody that could travel that far that fast on foot? Walking it? Yeah. Probably not. No. <laughs> no. Uh, as speaking as somebody who did cross country running in high school. No, you would have to be hauling ass to cover three quarters of a mile in five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, s- it's possible. It's you don't have to be you don't have to be busting ass the entire way, but you have to be moving pretty fast and you have to maintain a steady de- uh, a, st- a steady speed. Yeah, I mean, I hell, I can even look back on my own experience as well. I used to walk uh, about three quarters of a mile one way to go and donate blood plasma, and that took me about forty five minutes to an hour to walk. So yeah, yeah, I mean, 
a mile is is a pretty it's 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 a long distance when you're just you know hoofing it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then we've got since the protesters came out, the cops got for for one thing, I think they got a lot over defensive, and I'm probably uh, underselling it. Yeah, I think they, you are. <laughs> yeah, they break out the riot gear. They break out fucking military style, military grade tanks and shit. It's like really. Yeah. Why? Because a bunch of people are protesting a, a what is looking more and more like a wrongful death. It's like yeah, I mean yeah, they, yeah, overreaction much. I mean, but but then it all it all ties into the fact that they pretty much obviously seem to realize that they did something really wrong and they're pulling out all the stops to in, in a, like in a desperate flailing attempt to try and cover their ass. Which you know it's bad when Palestinians are giving advice over social media to people who live in the United States. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is pretty bad. Uh, They're like, this is how you deal with tear gas, and, you know, this is how you deal with that. It's like... Yeah, people who are currently really living awesome in a literal the... war zone yeah. are now telling Americans how to deal with this shit. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, these cops, they are armed better than... Than the goddamn military. Well, they're armed equally to the military. Well, and certain realistically, parts... because oh, yeah, this all of its equipment um, is given by the the government. It, it's part of their whole anti-terrorism thing. Yes, because and, and there's been news reports on that about um, you know. Uh, how you ha you basically can give any reason, and it was like some tiny town. I'm going to say in New Hampshire, it has one of these tank vehicles, and was basically like, "Yeah, we think it. You know, terrorism is a threat here because you never know where terrorism is going to happen." And that was essentially what their paperwork said. Wow, <laughs> that's how they, they they got an armored vehicle. You know what? If they if they pull that in my town, I'm gonna grab a can of spray paint and go to town. Cause fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care if I get in trouble for it. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, take a spray can and say, like, this was unnecessary. <laughs> unnecessary force. Yes, which is what these cops in Ferguson are employing. Uh, it's God. like, goddamn people. Oh yeah, arresting journalists. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, that shit. Pisses me off. Then arresting I mean, journalists after they signed an agreement with the state government of Missouri to not arrest journalists. Uh huh. That that was a really smart move, Ferguson Police Department. Yeah. And oh yeah. And calling to ask for information, calling the police department directly, and then get it, and then the people on the other end being rude or giving non-answers. It's like really. I just think it was hilarious that the guy from. Um, I can't remember his name. The guy from the Washington Post who got arrested um, said the way he described it was he got arrested along along with the guy from the Huffington Post, and they you know got brought in and you know they made a few calls and then when the police realized sort of what they were doing, they released them without any charges. Yeah. yeah. They didn't charge them with anything. They didn't write anything down. They didn't release the names of any of their officers. They're just like, please get out of here. Please just go. Yeah. And, and it's like, wow, you you don't you do realize you're actually making this worse. Because you're, like, clearly not following protocol. You're not doing your shit. And at this point, you're basically saying, just please don't be too mean. Yeah. yeah. Please don't be too mean. Throw tear gas, throw tear gas, throw tear gas. Don't be mean to us. We're we're just following what we want. We don't. I, I don't even know at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know what they're, who they're, who they're responding to. I don't know. I, or I, answering to. I think they're answering to, um... Um, 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 tiny penitis. That's what they're. That is what they are <laughs> responding to. Tiny penitis. Yeah, sounds yeah, about just, right. They, they've got to be. Ah, it seems to afflict uh, various corners of this nation and of yes, the world in general. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, I've also seen other pictures of now. Off, all officers have no badges and no name tags. Yeah, we can that's still see your like face, color. fuckers. Yes, and that's not like totally illegal. Yeah, you're on the job. That's that's why there's this whole thing. Well, this is definitely the big thing that has caused the uh, 
the the White House gov petition thing. I forget. I don't remember if it's on White House gov itself, but it's one of the official government petition sites where if they get a certain amount of signatures, they have to look at it. And there's one mm -hmm. on there now that requires that all law enforcement have to wear cameras. And you know what? There is one, at least one area that's been in the news recently. I think it's out in California, wherever that does this, and it works. I uh, would be in full agreement of this. I would honestly be willing to sign that kind of a position because, quite frankly, it's not that hard to make a camera no. anymore. To make a, a small camera that can fit on a lapel. I mean, even if you just all cops were issued GoPros. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's simple as that. Yeah, just put it on there. You could have it wirelessly upload to wherever, and there you go. It's it's done. It's safe. But of course, there are, there have been plenty of. This is not exactly a new idea. It's been bounced around for at least a few years, and cops over the years will be like, "No, you can't do that because the job safety is everything." No, if you're protesting this, odds are you're either going to be pulling some shit that you really shouldn't be doing on the job, or you're covering somebody's ass. And hey, just putting aside, you know, keeping personal responsibility of police officers intact or whatever, which is important. How about the fact that this could help you photograph and ID a criminal? Yes. If you're, like, chasing somebody and you, like, don't actually catch them, but you happen to get a good shot of their face on your camera, that's helping you do your job. Yeah. Exactly. So it works both ways. I mean, yeah. It, it, but no, we can't have that because then we'd actually have to do our jobs. We'd have to be responsible. Yeah, and speaking of which, and we then somebody from the Huffington Post actually posted this as well. Um, ah, God, the headline reads: "Veteran cop, if you don't want to get shot, shut up, even if we're violating your rights." Ah, uh, and what? It, and this actually comes from um, Sunil Sunil Duda, a 17-year veteran of the LAPD and professor of Homeland Security at Colorado Tech, has a suggestion for victims of police violence searching for someone to blame. Look in the mirror. In a column published Tuesday in the Washington Post titled, I'm a cop, if you don't want to get hurt, don't challenge me, Duda responds to mounting criticism of policing tactics on display in Ferguson, Missouri, amid the hyper-militarization of law enforcement and accusations that officers have violated the First Amendment rights of both demonstrators and journalists covering the events. In a particularly telling passage, Duda argues that citizens could deter police brutality if they were simply more cooperative even when they're unjustly targeted. In other words, let's say a cop comes in here and decide and, and is... It, it just going on information that I did something illegal. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. I, I, I kicked a kitten across the street. Okay, whatever. You know, wh whether I did it or not, you know, he thinks it is. So he's coming in and he's talking to me. And he's getting more and more aggressive because for whatever reason, he doesn't listen to me or believe me when I say, no, I could not do that because then I could not live with myself and I would I would – you know, just be just overcome with guilt for weeks. So I could not do that. But he doesn't believe me, and he gets more and more increasingly. He starts shoving me around unprovoked. And according to this guy, I'm supposed to just sit there and take it instead of say, hey, you know, I want your badge number. I want your name. This is not the way this is supposed to be going down. I have done nothing to you. I have answered your questions. I have cooperated, but you're still being an asshole. And you deserve to be reported. Now, my – now, that's obviously <laughs> – yeah, my my uh, example there is definitely tame compared to what's going on in Ferguson yeah. where, where guess what? Every police officer out there, if you are listening, if you are a police officer and you are listening, listen up. It is legal federally from what I understand for us to film you. In yeah, the course as, of your duty. As far as I'm aware, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. It's legal in all 50 states to film a police officer doing their duty. Yeah. And states, as far as I know. There have been states that have tried to make it illegal. I think Illinois was one of them. And obviously it's either not working or the federal court is like, no, fuck you. You, you know, you, you can't do that. 
cops can and should be recorded because you never know. I mean, for a while when I was driving and doing the trucking thing, I had my camera on just in case. I got pulled over maybe twice, and both times it was, you know, they were pleasant enough. But, you know, I had a camera just in case things went wrong, which really you should not have to worry about that in this country when it comes to the police. You really should. Yeah, oh. but apparently, according to what's happening in Ferguson, it's not too bad of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, honestly, it, that's that's the scary thing. It, it should not be that to that point, but it is. I it, know. We, we're reaching a point where we, we as citizens need to be more vigilant about what our, our cops could be doing i mean not because not to say that we need to you know go out and buy all the guns in the world and you know wave them around on their face like oh you can't do anything to me now but we need to be aware of our rights and exercise them and mm -hmm. if if a cop is is being aggressive then yeah pull, pull out a camera start filming him and let them know that this is what's going to happen oh yeah uh, and, and multiple people do it. The multiple people do it all the time. You see them on YouTube. Cops don't like that. At least the crooked ones don't. And there's a lot of crooked, crooked cops out there. And by the way, you brought up, you know, brought up you know, your rights and everything. I've not heard much out of the NRA or those kinds of people that are all like, you know, we must have our guns against government tyranny. Well, police officers in Ferguson, they're pretty – the cops are government – and they're, you know, they're terrorizing their citizens for whatever reason. I call racism, but mm -mm, that's just me. Where's the NRA? They're not defending them. Which that is I, a really good point. Yeah. I have not heard a single thing. I have not heard word one from the NRA about this entire fucking mis issue. It's It's been... It, I, I, like I said, I haven't heard barely anything about this except thanks, for, thanks to social media. Yeah. That's where I've been getting all of my news from concerning Ferguson. I Well, I don't watch TV anyway. There's a TV in our living room. I don't use it. You know, whatever. And, yeah. and I'm willing to bet, and well, I may be proven wrong. I may be proven right. I don't know. But I'm willing to bet the reason why the NRA hasn't stepped in is because it's run by a bunch of old, white, racist motherfuckers who don't give a shit about black people. <laughs> uh that's my guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I can't speak for the, the alleged racism, if there is any, of Wayne LaPierre or any of the other people in the NRA, but it's definitely run by a bunch of old white people. Yeah, yeah, so it's just, just telling a little bit, guys. And, and speaking of old white racist motherfuckers, the KKK is on their way there, or are already there to defend, not to defend the black people, obviously, but to defend white businesses. <laughs> that's right. Because that's, that, oh. Amnesty International got kicked out, but the KKK is welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? This, this, this is so telling that it's a race thing. And I've, I've had people tell me, well, they're making it a race thing. It's been a race thing from the beginning. It has. It shouldn't be. It should not have even been a thing. But you got one, and again... This is this is my my guess and my assumption here. One racist white cop decides he doesn't like this black boy because black boy said something back to him. Because oh my god, back talking a cop is so illegal. You know he had to shoot him execution style. Yeah, tell me that's not race. Tell me, come on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Somebody's a little worked up. Yeah, just a little bit. Now I I, I say that laughing that doesn't mean that you guys shouldn't be worked up about this because this is an awful terrible horrendous shitty situation right no yeah it it really is because i mean just, yeah just the, just the way they've been shutting everybody out the way that they've been blowing up the situation literally and figuratively and the fact that yeah that we have this motherfucker coming out and saying like well if you don't walk if you don't if you want to avoid police brutality then just don't talk back to me it's like, don't don't. Just, I mean, obviously, I mean, just let me let me violate your rights, and then we'll move on, and you'll be you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 
Let's Seriously, see. if you could just be okay with me violating you, it would all be okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'd and just I, be gold. <laughs> and I know this is an extreme, an extreme comparison, but it's like telling a rape victim to just sit there. And no, play. that was exactly what I was thinking when I said that out loud. Yeah. So. There you go. Yeah. We're yeah. we're on the same page for sure. Yeah. But I know I know there's going to be at least one person out there be like, you had to go that far. Yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, bend over and take it. It's, yeah. Seriously, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, uh, so... But until we get even you know, more information... Yeah, we are that worked up because we have went through half the show on this. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of other things that we do want to talk about on this show. Um, that way, you know, we're not sitting here going around and having a circle jerk about who did what and where it's going on in Ferguson. So, Holly found this. And she posted it on Facebook from Slate.com, and it's called Take the No Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, for those who don't know, Holly, since you've been kind of quiet most of the show, how about you explain what the Ice Bucket Challenge is, if you wish? Um, well, <laughs> it's sort of a long story, because most of you probably know the Ice Bucket Challenge as having to do with ALS, which is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, but the thing is, the ice bucket challenge didn't start out this way. In fact, it didn't even start out as an ice bucket. It started off with people jumping into frozen water, or freezing water, or very, very cold water, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a challenge among people, and, um, the thing was you were supposed to then donate to the, um, challenger's choice of charity. Right. And at some point, that became um, the ALS Foundation, or Association, rather. And that's where that came from. Hmm. Yeah. Um, this actually sounds now, like really familiar, just if I, if I may, to a similar like charity event that happens here in Alaska up in Seward called the Polar Bear Plunge, where people gather sponsorships for... I, I can't remember if it's a single charity or a charity of their choice. And when they get enough sponsors, they jump off the dock into like yeah, freezing it cold is, water. It is very much it is very, very similar to that. Hmm. Um so it started to catch on um on social media and then through traditional media. So uh, I know a lot of people have friends who did this before it was the ice bucket challenge before it had anything to do with um ALS. And the ALS Association did a really smart thing in adopting this as you know, this is our thing, despite the fact that it is not. Yeah. Um, and the thing is that it's gone viral, and it it's not promoting any real sense of awareness, um, at least that I'm seeing. Now, I know everybody's having a different experience with this, and the, when I posted this on Facebook the other day, there was some big drama about, you know, well, but look at all the money that's been raised, and... Um, I'm glad to say that in between the time that I originally talked about this and today, um, originally it was like only 2% of donations were from new donors. Mm -hmm. That number has increased dramatically, which Sweet. is good. Um, yeah. but I still think, um, it's somewhere around 15%, I want to say. Well, that's not bad. So, I mean, it's better, but it's not great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the problem is, uh, people are filling these buckets with ice and water and dumping it on themselves, and they're not actually talking about what ALS is. I, I've had right. multiple people, um, you know, either in actual conversation or um, seen it happen through conversations on Facebook where somebody's like, yeah, but I don't even know what ALS is. While they're, you know, watching a an ice bucket challenge video or while they're sharing an ice bucket challenge video. And it's because so many of these videos aren't talking about it. Yeah. It's a yeah. neurodegenerative so disease that affects um, nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and basically, it you're just not sending the signals through. Yeah, I think – I know Nash did a variation of it during RDA. I don't remember if he talked much about the disease itself. I know he said he was talking about – you know, he talked about donating to the ALS Foundation or, or whatever it's called. Association. Association, thank you. 
And, uh, you know, he talked about that. He did the thing and, and about gave himself frostbite, apparently. Um, which was fun. But, and he and he proved he went through. He donated 50 bucks, which, mm-hmm. which is good, which is very good. But I don't remember him talking too much about it. I mean, he's, he's got the clip on YouTube if, you, if anybody follows him. Um, but uh, so if I'm wrong, you guys can come back and say, no, he talked about it at this time stamp right here. OK, <laughs> but he did the thing. He didn't talk much about it, but he did talk about why he's doing it and the donation and everything. Uh, I've seen like one other one, and and me being me, of course, it was Ivy Doom Kitty, and I don't think she mentioned much about it either. So, so yeah, yeah a lot of the ones I've seen are just like, yep, here's me pouring some ice on my head. Now, of all people in the world, Stevo from Jackass mm-hmm. did an excellent post about um, why this is really not as good as everybody's running around and saying it is. I mean. Don't get me wrong. I'm all about awareness, um, and it's awesome to um, raise money for a great cause. But the fact that, you know, as of the time that he had posted it, we had only raised $15 million. When you look at the star power and, and the money behind the people who we're seeing doing this and who are really making this challenge famous, it's a little embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Just a little. I mean, that... and, and that's why I went out of my way to highlight Charlie Sheen. Like, he might be a douchebag and, you know, have some serious issues. But the man was like, yep, $10,000. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. And now, here to, the, to the, the cast and crew of Two and a Half Men. Do the same thing, you fuckers. There you yeah. go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. That, that actually reminds me of a thing that... That we in in our like little reviewing producing community or whatever we try to do we've tried to do every year is the uh, red ribbon reviewer thing or what have you I don't mm-hmm. remember if we did it this past year I know I try to do it uh, I, even though I don't focus much on the videos it mostly just goes up on the podcasts and I know at least at least one episode out of each out of each, out of the month each year I try to talk about it. A little bit, though, you know, like where you can find at least where you can find the resources to find out more information or, you know, you know, because I don't think I need to go much into detail about, you know, you know, HIV and AIDS because pretty much everybody knows what it is, you know, but I give uh, give enough information, put the red ribbon up there, tell them where they can go and find out all more information because red ribbon reviewers dot com is where that go- where it goes. And. The last time I had actually checked on it and actually looked at it, they did have you know, a list of sites you can go to and you can get more information or even donate. Mm-hmm. And the whole point behind that is to just raise awareness. And we try and do that. I've seen other people do it. Like I think it was like one of the first years Omega did it, and like she had like a thing at the end of the episode where Giovanni asked her about the Red Ribbon, and she mentioned a thing or two about it. Although I think probably the one thing, the worst one about it – in terms of conveying information and everything, and interestingly enough, with the nostalgia critic. Yeah, I actually remember when when that happened. Cause I remember he just showed up in a video and he's wearing a red ribbon. It's like, oh, that's 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 a, that's an age ribbon, I would imagine. Okay. Yeah. I was you like, gonna say anything about that? Yeah, and it's like he had the ribbon, no. and then okay. he had like the red ribbon reviewers thing at the beginning yeah, at the, end at, of the video. At, I mean, and that year even uh, Lacey did it, and she didn't talk about it in the video, but she had something like on the video itself say, "Hey, you curious about this? I have information in you know in the description, since it's on YouTube, you know that I think is is acceptable as well." Yeah, at least it's something, yeah. and that unlike right. a lot of what I'm seeing going on, I mean, even people are sharing the press releases coming from the ALS Association, and. It, it's like, for all it was a great idea to, to take the ice bucket challenge and claim it as your own, it is a great idea. They're still not using it to its fullest potential because there's you actually have to navigate elsewhere on their website to find out what ALS is. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, people of the world, but we are inherently lazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, Especially you know, with the advent this of the is internet. Coming, you know, people who know me well know that I love to work. <laughs> and, but, you know, yeah, there are some things that I am just legitimately lazy about. 
And right. some people are lazy about yep. gathering information. <laughs> you know, if it's not right there in front of them, no, they're not going to Google it. You know, I have friends who ask me all the time things that they could easily Google. And I'm just like, seriously, <laughs> are you kidding oh, me? Yeah. Just that's, look it up. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's kind of one of those ways Becky and I are, are, are kind of opposite of each other. I will sit here and I will wonder about something and I'm, I, I usually won't do anything unless it's like really, really, really concerning about me or, or something really nagging at me. I say something and her first thought is to hit Google. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, much. we need more Beckys, less me. <laughs> nah, we need both of us. Uh, oh, God. So. But yeah, it's like, and then my other issue with it is people are like, oh, this is a great social media campaign. Except for the social media part of this, this, the social media aspect of this is not nearly as important and is, has not nearly gotten the word out as much as the traditional media. The fact that it's been carried on major news sites, the fact that celebrities are doing this and, and promoting this. It's like, I, I'm sorry, um, but everybody who's patting themselves on the back saying, oh, look what a great job we did on raising awareness. You know, most of those people didn't talk about ALS, um, and yeah. you know, just yeah. challenging your friends to dump ice water on themselves and not talking about the issue isn't really helping. Yeah, basically, which... like I, I honestly like when I when I first heard about the ice bucket challenge, my my initial thought was like, well, that's not that's not a bad way to get get the word out, I guess. But you know, then I I found out a bit more that it's just you know. Yeah, there's not, not not all the videos are really talking about where to go or really talking about what ALS is. In all honesty, just last night, my friends and I, my roommates and I were talking about it. They thought ALS was a kind of software. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I had to kind of set them straight a little. Oh, no. And they'd heard about the Ice Bucket Challenge, but they didn't really fully know what ALS was. And that's, you know, it wasn't all of them that were there, but I mean, yeah. it was just, yeah. it was a little and misunderstanding. It's like, congratulations to those of you who have looked it up and who have done the research. But the fact is, a lot of people aren't. And I don't think that it's something that we should be applauding that, oh, look at, look at all this good we've done when you're talking about, but this is for awareness, when there are so many people who have heard of the challenge but still have no idea what it's for. Yeah, I mean, if you want to dump buckets of ice water on yourself just for the lulls and get that spread around and make it go viral that's fine if plus it's want... wasteful of a natural resource i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah although i've heard that people in california could be fined or arrested because of it because they're going through a drought i, I don't think that that's a real thing yeah but i um that, that they could be fined or arrested but i you know i have i, I do know that california is going through a drought yeah. and if you live in california i urge you please don't yeah. Yeah. Waste a resource like that. No, do do something else along those lines. Maybe you know, maybe go walk to a Walmart freezer for ten minutes. You know, or however. Yeah, long people you in the ask. northwest can raise in the northeast can raise awareness. Yeah, there you go. Oh lordy, so I, you know, I while we were all talking about this, I had this great idea. I wouldn't mind talking to everybody else on, well, both on uh, my side and on Nerdvice. You know, get together, put like a video compilation of, of of all of us doing the ice bucket challenge, and in between everybody getting doused, have like little bits of information about ALS and what it is. So it's like, like for example, like it would start with like say I would get doused, and then there'd be some information, and then uh, Holly would get doused, and then there'd be some information, and so on and so forth, until we get all the information out there, or until we run out of people, in which case we would just consolidate the information cards a bit. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I would, I would definitely do. I mean, I can't donate because I'm Poe, but you know, getting the word out there, raising awareness, I think that would be great. Yeah, exactly. Because if 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 the if the ALS Association is going to appropriate this whole uh, deal or you know take it on as their own, then I think people should who are doing it really should take on a responsibility to. To, to further information because ALS is a serious and horrifying disease. Yeah. I mean, and we need to, they are, they need to, to know how to fight it. Yeah. Oh, so, so to kind and, of, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say like that. And if I was to ever like do a version of this, my own, I would basically, it would be, it would be because I can't really donate much of anything, but I would still try and donate something. 
yeah. and include in the video description of what ALS is and where you can go, and in the wherever I embed the video, same same deal. Yeah. Links, descriptions, information. Oh yeah. So um, so to kind of go from that to something a little more silly. Um, for at least the next 10 minutes, because there is one other thing I do want to talk about before we get out of here. Uh, but before we hit that, a little bit of a little bit of lighter stuff that we can talk about, uh, just to give ev- give all of our listeners a bit of mood whiplash. Uh, a while ago, I was just cruising through Reddit, and I found a thread called "Doctors of Reddit: What's Something You've Had to Tell a Patient That You Thought For Sure Was Common Knowledge?" This. Right now, as it stands, um, I'm looking at a at a scroll bar that's maybe half an inch, if that, maybe <laughs> less than that. <laughs> so it's a yeah. long, long ass thread. We're not going to go through all of it. We're just going <laughs> to go through some of the highlights. Um, let's see. Uh, let's. Okay. Okay. The first one. Oh God, <laughs> the first one. Gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Um, user states, I have, he, have, he has had, he have had to per- inform, wow, that's, ah, the grammar is just getting to me. He's had to inform a few male patients that the condom only goes on the shaft and should not be pulled down to include covering of the testicles. Oh, no. Ow! Oh, man. And what makes it worse is the first person to respond to that. Just the mental image made me crack up. Be right back. Gotta try something. <laughs> Suck, no, don't try that! Oh, uh, no. No, yes, a condom could be stretched to go over your hand. That does not mean you sh- should try and stretch it to go over your testicles. No. <laughs> just... Oh, my God. Uh... I'm, I'm just looking at this one. Paramedic here. Have informed numerous people that pouring Gatorade into the unresponsive diabetic's mouth is not a good idea. Uh, oh God! No, no. <laughs> but someone comments, but it has electrolytes. A girl um, said that her boyfriend used a sandwich bag as a condom. She went into detail about how he shaped it as a condom with the little ties the bags come with. <laughs> <laughs> Are there metal in those ties? Like, aren't you just gonna poke a hole in it? You would think. <laughs> ah, no, no. Well, just having that thing wrapped. Her, oh no. And and just and and even worse. I mean, if it even if it's like okay feeling for the guy, imagine how it must feel to have that thing inside a vagina. No, I don't even have one, and it's just no, no, Thank all you. of the no. Ah. Uh. Speaking of speaking of which, uh, my wife and I were trying to get pregnant, and due to possible complications, we were talking to an obstetrician. Towards the end of the visit, he tells us, in all seriousness, just so you guys know, you have to stop using condoms if you want to get pregnant. We just stare at him a bit and say, uh, obviously? And he just shakes his head and says, you'd be surprised. There's been a few couples that didn't realize that. That's not as bad as as stories I've heard of couples who don't realize you need to fuck in order to become pregnant. (laughs) This is a story about somebody's grandmother. I love this one. Um, She was 18 and in labor with her first child. She was the kind of lady to wear pants in the late 40s. The nurse looked her up and down and told her to put on her labor clothes. So she took off her top and bra and got on the bed. (laughs) The nurse is really confused. Take off your pants, too. Why? It comes out my belly button, right? Ask Grandma. No, darling. It comes out the way he came in. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lori. I mean, okay. Yeah, that that's... Even then, even at that point, most people would have understood babies come from the vagina. Uh, you, would, you would think. Oh, yeah, but, Lordy. I don't know. I, I just... <laughs> It actually just reminded me of um, did, do you remember, did do you remember the Adams family value Adams family values the, the opening scene where they're in the hospital having the baby. Yes. And uh, there's the one girl who's just going through, and then the stork dropped the gem down into the flower patch, and then God kissed it, and it became a. I don't remember how she says it. It's like our parents are having a baby too. They had sex. Yes. <laughs> that is exactly. That's Adams exactly. family. 
That teaching is better sex education than about 95% of America. Yes. Adam Sandler. That's, that, that's the kind of family that, that I could want. You know, I would love to be a Gomez. Uh, hey, I'm only oh, yeah. letter Gomez away. and Morticia love each other. Oh, hell yeah. And they show it. Yeah. And, and it's not like the typical sitcom wife berating the husband or anything. It's just they're equals. And that's how it should be. They got how long this has right it been since we waltzed? Yeah. Hours. Yes. Yeah, they got it right in the 60s. Uh, but, of course, they also have the macabre and, and everything else. And, of course, people might shy away from that. But you know what? They're, yeah. they're a bunch of pansies. Uh, all right. So let's see. Another one. ER nurse here had to explain to a 27-year-old female that this bleeding she was having for a week every month was normal and why. That's not the worst part. She had two children. <laughs> oh, there's a worse what? one. There's definitely one that's worse. Uh oh. Not a doctor, but a paramedic. During clinical time in the ER, a 17 year old girl came in with a bloody rectum slash anus. She wasn't wiping after using the bathroom, and it was causing basically a really bad diaper rash. So the oh. nurse had to call social services and explain to this girl proper wiping. Oh. How old was she? Oh. 17. So, How can you get to be 17 and have never wiped your ass? How can okay, you do for, that? For, for a second, I thought you said 70. That about <laughs> yeah, made no. me really... oh. No, if she were 70, I would just imagine that she just couldn't reach. Yeah. 17. <laughs> that, yeah, oh. The only reason you could be 17 and not be able to reach to wipe your ass is if you physically are unable because you are so goddamn large. Or that, you have, like, stump arms or something. Yeah. You know. Oh my oh god, oh god. Used to be a PA student. Our OBGYN lecturer told us a story of how an eighty year old woman came in with vaginal pain. Long story short, turned out her husband had been fucking her in the urethra for fifty plus years instead of the <gasps> vagina. Oh my god. Poor woman. Yeah. What the f how the f <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, poor Holly. I don't even wanna. Dead forever. <laughs> no, just no. Oh. No. <laughs> That's just, just, just. How That's do... the worst sex life ever. That is. <laughs> I mean, especially for her, for him, he's like, oh damn, you're tight for years, baby. You're fucking my ear, oh. That's why. Oh. oh. God, she's probably wetting herself her whole damn life. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Just, oh. Okay, oh. Let's go with the funny one after this, because that's just horrifying. Yeah. Never get that out of yeah. my head. Oh, lordy. I work as a pharmacologist, and one of the patients we had at my company was complaining the cat allergy medicine we gave her wasn't working. It was formulated in an inhaler. Turns out she was spraying the inhaler on her cat. <laughs> <laughs> we had to explain to her that she needed to inhale it. Uh, uh, oh. Wow. Okay. And last one I'm going to pull out here. Uh, nurse here was sitting at the desk when suddenly a patient's tele telemetry warning goes off. I fly down to the room expecting the worst, only to find a family member placing the patient's tele telemetry pad leads rather on their back. The response? My back's been killing me. I think it's a pinched nerve, so I'm going to borrow his muscle shocker pads for a few minutes. <sighs> I don't think, yeah, yeah, the telemetry pads, don't they, that's like, aren't they supposed to just monitor your shit or something, or? Because cause I, I, I honestly do not know, but I, I just have a feeling that muscle shocker pads is not what they're used for. I, I, I'm just mm -hmm. guessing. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. This is me being, you know, okay. Uh, so, so that, that's going to take care of that for right now. <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> the things you can find on Yeah, Reddit. that was, yeah, that was a, a quick descent into madness. Yes. Oh, and, and we kind of needed that, especially with, life. yes. <laughs> oh. oh, so, and we needed that because last thing we're going to talk about is, is of course, very serious and again, this is something I also touched on when uh, on the last thespian talk, 
as and that is the uh, suicide of uh, Robin Williams and uh, and everything that's happened around there. Um, first of all, before we get into you know the suicide itself, I do want to put the word out there to anybody who is listening that I happened to be one of those idiotic motherfucking pieces of shit that decided it was a good time to troll the hell out of Zelda Williams when she's grieving for her father, they can go and fuck off and die and jump into a volcano. In Iceland. Yeah, pretty pretty much. <laughs> Just find, find the nearest cliff to walk off of and save the rest of the world from your genes. Yes. Yeah. Please. I mean... Jesus Christ! You you just don't deserve to live. I don't even want to. I don't. No, sorry. I don't want to go that far. But you don't. You don't deserve certain things in life if you're gonna take to social media to the troll the hell of God out of somebody. You not procreate. Yes, please. Not. No. If you already have. Then fuck you anyway. Ugh. No. Yeah. You Give... surrender your children Ugh. to to social services. It is in the best interest of everyone. Yes, please. Yeah, I swear to God, I hope you don't have children if you were one of those people. Yes. Oh, my God. Just, just, uh, I can only imagine what kind of Hitler you're raising. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, it is bad but... enough that she's having to go through this because suicide, the reason why he committed suicide, he had depression. And depression is a bitch, to put it lightly. Well, and also, well, and also, it was re- it was re- revealed by his his widow that he was in the early stages of Parkinson's too. Yeah. So. So whether I, oof, yeah. yeah whether or not that was a contributing factor to everything we don't know, but we do know he suffered depre- from depression. Yes, and, and that's probably the most important thing to take away from from this is that depression is just. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't suffer from depression, so I can't, I can't say like, oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. But just seeing what depression can do to people, it, it really is terrible. Yeah, and I've said so, most likely on this particular show, I probably suffer from it. I've not been diagnosed. I've not went to a doctor to get verification. But looking at all the signs that other people have gone through, and and you know, my friends and everybody else, I probably have it. You know, yeah, yeah. I and, could, I could, I wouldn't be surprised if I was to get diagnosed with it, but I won't, I won't say that I do. Yeah, and and keep in mind, I'm not saying for sure that I do. I'm yeah. saying I probably do, based on the evidence. I would need a doctor to verify because doctors know their shit. And right. yeah, and in even this, it's a roller coaster. I mean, I've had nights where I would go to bed and I would wonder. Okay, you know, is this, you know, am I going to wake up or, or am I going to do this or that or, or, or what if I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to beat myself up so much that I'm going to have the intense desire to go and drive and wrap myself around a tree? I mean, I remember when I was driving, I, I, I had like, you know, little fantasies where I would like, you know, run off the road, flip the truck and end up killing myself because, hey, you know, I didn't, you know, it, even though my mind knew differently. I felt like, you know, I was all alone and nobody loved me. Nobody cared. Even though, you know, logically, I knew that was that was further from the truth. I knew this. And I still know this. But that's the kind of thing, again, speaking as somebody who only suspects he has it and does not know for sure, that's what it's like. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm sure plenty of people out there that actually have been diagnosed – and actually have depression and for sure know that they have it, you know, that's that they could probably back me up on it. Ah, oh, you have do you have thoughts there, Holly? Or it's just really, really sad, and yeah. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it in a lot of ways it takes me back, you know, eight months to when. Um, Justin committed suicide yeah. from depression, oh. and yeah. I'm we're working on the um, closed captioning for the video right now. Um, yeah. Subtitles for the video, so you can understand what everybody's saying. Um, but what it comes down to me, for me, is is just this one thing that both um, Justin's widow and his mother spoke about which is if you have depression, take your meds. 
please, yeah. please take your meds. Um, you know, they may make you feel weird. You may not want to because you don't want to be depressed. But the, the fact of the matter is it doesn't change the situation. You know, it's it's not your fault that your brain chemistry doesn't work right. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you had any other illness, chances are you would be taking the medication to fight it. So yeah. just because it's your brain, yeah. don't think that you don't need it or that you shouldn't need it. Yeah, and if you right. and if you're in this and and if you're like in my position, you suspect you might have it. Don't be like me and be stubborn and come up with all these sorts of excuses to not do it. Go do it. Yeah, and I'm don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you know Robin Williams wasn't on his medication or whatever, um, but it is a known fact that he struggled with drug abuse for years, and it was very likely as a form of self-medication yeah um right so um while i don't have any facts about it it does lead me to believe that he probably just wasn't taking medication at the time yeah and you know don't feel like it's something that you need to be ashamed about um it yeah your depression experience is unique it's true Nobody is going right. to have a depression experience like you. But that doesn't mean that people don't know what you're going through and they don't know what it feels like because even though your experience is unique, that it doesn't mean that other people aren't feeling in very similar ways. You know, it, right. it's, it, is, it says unique in as much as your life is unique. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are other people who are feeling bad or worthless or you know just not good and they don't know why and they can't do anything to change it um and it's not just you and there are plenty of people even if you don't feel comfortable talking to a therapist or talking to somebody that you know in real life um there are plenty of people out there who are are willing to talk to you that's been one of the really great things to have come out of such a tragic event is that there are people who have said on social media, listen, you don't know me, um, but if you ever need somebody to talk to, hit me up and I'll talk to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and and, sometimes it is easier to talk to somebody who you don't know. Sometimes it is easier to talk about it with somebody who isn't a medical professional because you feel like there's less judgment there. Yeah. I mean, hell. Right. This is, and I just thought, you know, a good way to do about it, Omegle. You know, I mean, it's not the best way. It's not the optim- most optimal way, but you get put in there and you have strangers talking to you, all anonymous. And, yeah, you're going to get some dicks every now and then, both literal and figuratively. But, you know, you could get somebody who's really willing to be there and help you and at least talk to you through it. Like, hey, you know what? Cool, you know? Yeah. yeah. So no, I mean, that's 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 the good thing about that's another good thing about social media is that it's just expanded the area that people have to be able to to talk about these certain things. If they have something that's weighing them down, but they don't feel comfortable talking to somebody close to them because they feel there might be too much judgment or that the person's just going to be too nice and not really tell them what they really think, then talk to a, an anonymous stranger who you know, wants to maybe say something but has no preconceptions about you, so they, you know, have, they'll just give you the, you know, tell, tell you what they think and maybe yeah. maybe help you out. Yeah, and I can I can speak for myself on this. Um, you know, if, you know, any of you guys out there, you need an ear or something to talk to or whatever, I mean, I give my social media information out at the end of every show. Don't be afraid to talk to me, you know, email me, message me on on. Twitter or, or Tumblr or on Facebook, which I'm not that hard to find on Facebook. If you follow me on Twitter, you can find me on Facebook. It's, you know, it's not that hard. Uh, so, you know, my door is usually open unless I'm asleep or busy doing something like this, you know. So my door is usually open, and I'm usually going to be there to listen and talk. Even if even if it's not right away, I will get back to you, you know. You know, if it's yeah. like really, really serious, I will definitely. 
Uh, so I like to keep that line of communication but, open. But I just I just want to uh, say one more thing. Um, I mean, I don't know how much longer we have on the show, but I just, I, I just want to at least say this one thing about Robin Williams. Just, you know, people there have been people who said that, oh, well, you know, he, he, he was, you know, a funny guy and, you know, he made all these funny movies, but in the end, you know, he was obviously so sad that he took his own life. I mean, isn't that, you know, just the most depressing thing in the world? And honestly, like, it, you know, it's very, it's extremely sad that he took his own life and that he ended his life the way he did. But honestly, I think it's extremely inspiring that he put on a, you know, a happy face and, you know, was the funny man, was the, the clown for as long as he was in spite of everything he was going through and he helped bring people up and he helped make them feel better. I mean, he visited Christopher Reeves in the hospital after his accident and during a, you know, an operation that could have potentially killed him right then and there and made him laugh for the first time since the accident. Yeah. I mean, the guy was a goddamn saint and for, for for doing what he did for as long as he did in spite of everything he was going through. And I I think that's what that that's what we need to remember about him. Yeah. He was he was a trooper. Very much a real trooper. And mm-hmm. and when it comes to all of us that work in similar fields, whether it be movies or comedy or even, you know, internet productions, podcasts, reviews, whatever, you know, no matter what happens, you know, keep Try and keep going. Keep going as much as you can. Be like Robin Williams in that, you know? Yeah, the times are going to be rough, whether no matter whether or not you're suffering from depression or anything else. But if it's if something is your passion, you know, take it by the but, take the bull by the horns. You know? But you also need to be real about what's going on in your life. I mean, yes. and that's another that's the the again, you know, it's important to to, to remember Robin Williams for who he was, but also for what happened and that if if you don't let things if, if if you don't let things get treated, then a wound can fester, mm-hmm. and then there's just very little you can do about it after that point. Yeah. So uh, with that, we are we are about out of time for this week. So um, unle- now now before we actually pop out of here, uh, Holly, did you have any last things you want to say about this? No. You're good. Yep. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop out of here then, and I think I hear it. I thought I heard a cat. <laughs> oh, I'm hearing cats now. Oh, I, I, I can tell Becky's going to have like about 10 million cat macros waiting for me after I get done with this. Oh, so, but uh, if we wanted to find Gonzo on the social media, where could we find him? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, at Gonzo Link. I'm also part of the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I am the narrator for Team Brotherhood's uh, abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged, and I also have my own podcast, Focus on the Frames. It's a podcast where Zenith Will Rule and I talk about movies. You can find that on his YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review, and on the Tumblr page, Focus on the Frames Podcast.tumblr.com. There you go. And if we wanted to find Holly, where could we find her? You can find me all over the place as Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X. Um, don't spell it the way that Homer does, because that's just Yeah, wrong. that was horrible. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, he misspelled my username like a week or two ago. And it was really funny, because I spell it at the end of every show. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, how the hell did he do that? Fuck um, but my yeah. Stickers. <laughs> you can find me all over different forms of social media. It's Kooky Gox. You can find me on my Facebook fan page at Holly Christine Brown. And you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet! And as for me, here we go. We got the spiel going again. He's going to ramble again. Uh, you can find me on the social media at Gomer21XX. That's on Twitter and Tumblr. You can find me on Facebook. If you follow me on Twitter, you can easily find me on Facebook by my actual name. Um, you can also find my site and Nerdvice on uh, on the Facebook uh, things. We I believe both of them have pages. I know, I know my site has a page. And Nerdvice has a page. And speaking of which, my stuff, if you don't want to go to the pages, you want to go directly to the sites, just go to rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can find my stuff there. Uh, in fact, rtgomer.com, we just picked up like 12 new people and they're starting to get – they're dipping their feet in the water. They're getting the stuff out there, um, including just just today we've got some stuff going up from uh, Blu-ray Talk with uh, the cinematic metalhead now, as she's known now. 
and also uh, the Indie Christian reviews by uh, from uh, Zach Lawrence, who both of them are both of them do an extremely good job. Go check them out, and keep in mind that's just the two right off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, so, and if you like the stuff that I do here, if you like the podcast and the other videos that I do. Then, uh, you know, why don't you consider going over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer21xx, and you can toss a little bit of money. It's a per video, per production thing. Uh, I usually do anywhere from, you know, 20 to 25 per month, depending on what I've got going on. And I say that because I don't want you guys going in and not knowing what you're getting into. But you can also set your cap, and that's, and you'll be fine for the month. And, uh, you know, and that money will go towards things like getting new equipment, upgrading equipment, upgrading website, maintaining all of that good stuff. And if I get enough, then, you know, new studio space, i.e. I move the fuck out of here. Um, that sort of thing. That's where all that money will be going towards. And and more that I can't even stay here because the rest of it is on the site and we're running low on time and I'm already rambling. So again, patreon.com slash gomer21 double X if you want to just throw money at me for the shows that I do. And as a bonus, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see the lovely title card art by the lovely, lovely title card artist, also my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins. You can find her on Patreon at patreon.com slash Becky Hop, which also includes links to her DeviantArt, her own personal site. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you. Yes, a 30-second animation from an award-winning animator. Yes, she is an award-winning animator. I will never get tired of calling her that, even though she constantly reminds me that Chirpy also won awards. <laughs> oh, So with that, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for letting me ramble at you here at the end and, and through all the other shows. Uh, I feel like I ramble too much like I'm doing now. So again, thank you. We will see you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.